Let's look once again at this idea of the area underneath function x squared between the values of 0 and 1. In other words, I want to figure out what is going to be my area underneath this function. Now, what we've seen before is a couple things. First of all, we saw that we could approximate this by the sum of the areas of a bunch of different rectangles. And then we've seen sort of philosophically that the idea is that we're going to allow the number of rectangles to go to infinity and it's going to give a better and better approximation. But now what I want to do in this video is use that idea, approximating by rectangles and taking the limit as n goes to infinity, to actually get a value for this. No longer an approximation, but an actual number for it. So I'm going to remind you that what we're doing in a different way of presenting it is a definite integral. The integral from 0 to 1 that's where I'm going between, of the function x squared dx, and it's going to be written down as this computation we've done before. The limit then goes to infinity of the sum of some xi squareds delta x. And what I need to do to actually compute this thing, to actually make this thing be a number like 7 or 2 or whatever the number is going to be, we'll have to figure it out, is I need to determine what is the delta x, I need to figure out what exactly are the xi's, and then I hopefully will result in some sum that we're actually able to compute. So let's do the delta x's first. If I think about my interval, it's from 0 to 1. And what I'm doing in my sum is I'm breaking this up into n different components. So my interval is now going to be broken up into n subintervals. So what's the width of one of these subintervals? Sub I've got an original width of 1, I've divided it into n different pieces, so I think the width is 1 over n. In other words, we can see that the delta x is whatever the, the original interval was from 0 to 1, or a width of 1 minus 0, divided into n pieces, and I'm just left with 1 over n. All right. What about the xi that I have here? That's my next question. So if I have this xi, what I want to figure out is some actual choice for it. And it's up to me. I can choose a left endpoint, a right endpoint, a midpoint, many different ones. I'm going to choose the right endpoint. And I'm going to try to write down a formula in terms of i for this particular right endpoint. And the way I want to think about this is I start at 0. And then I go over 1 width, 1n. And then I go over 2 width, so 2n. And then I go over 3 width, so 3n. And in general, what I'm going to say is that my xi is I go over i amounts times whatever that delta x was. Okay, let's test to see if this formula makes sense. If I chose i equal to 1, so I'm looking at xi, it would just be equal to delta x. And that does make sense. If I start at 0, then I'm saying I go over just one width, I'm going to the right endpoint. That's an amount delta x over. And then if I choose a 2 here, so it's twice delta x, I'm saying I start at 0, I go over 1 delta x, I go over a second delta x, and that's the right endpoint of my second rectangle. So I think this formula works. Okay, so I've got this delta x, I've got this xi, let's take both of them and we're going to put them into my formula here. So what I get for this area, the limit of the sum, it's the xi squared, so I put in my xi squareds, and then it's the delta x, that's the 1 over n, so I multiply it there, and it's this big, messy, gnarly expression. All right, so we've made a decent amount of progress. We've tried to compute this area, and we've written it out as this limit of the sum. The sum is now written entirely in terms of the n's, and entirely in terms of the index variable i. But now I want to figure out, can I actually figure out what this value is going to be? Do I know what number this is going to be? Now, the first way I can clean up this formula is note that the sum here depends on the index variable i. The sum doesn't depend on the n. So I have a 1 over n squared here, I have a 1 over n. I can pull all of those n's outside of my summation. In other words, I can clean it up and say it's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n cubed times this sum from 1 up to n of i squared. Okay, so what's the sum from 1 up to n of i squared? Now, I'm going to cite a fact for you, and I'll put a link in the description of where you can go and find a proof for this, but the fact is this. That sum, the sum from 1 up to n of i squared, is just equal to this nice expression, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided about by 6. You can prove this with something called mathematical induction. And it's not really a part of calculus, it's sort of an algebraic proof. So I'm going to pull out this fact for you that we have this here, and I'm going to use that 
to help me evaluate what I have right here. Indeed, I can say it's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n cubed, and now I've just replaced my sum with this result here that I've claimed from my fact. All right, so let's actually try and compute this limit. This is a limit that we should know how to do. It is a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. And we can ask if we're taking a limit at infinity, what's the highest power on the top and the highest power on the bottom? The bottom is pretty easy, just n cubed. And on the top here, well, there's an n, there's an n plus one and there's a two n plus one. So if I just look at the, the multiplication of those out, the highest power is gonna be n cubed. And its coefficient is one, one, and there's a two here. So it's a two n cubed on the top. And then factor in the divided out by six that I have, what I get is that this is just the limit as n goes to infinity of two n cubed on the top, six n cubed on the bottom. My n's cubed are gonna go away. The two over six, last time I checked, was just equal to the value of one third. And now we have an answer. This is the first time in the last couple videos that we've actually managed to figure out what was the area underneath the curve x squared between the point zero and one. And notice that while we were doing rectangle approximations, if I use five rectangles or 10 rectangles or 100 rectangles, I could compute them all out on my calculator. That would be possible. And you'd get a value that might be close, but it wouldn't be the exact value. The claim here, the magic, of the indefinite integral is that it gives you the exact value, that by taking this limit of this particular sum and evaluating it incorrectly and using some algebraic tricks and going in and evaluating a limit at the end, it's a bit of a process, but it gets us to an actual number. The area under x squared between zero and one is equal to one third.